Hey friends, Andy Jenkins here with the Warrior Hope Podcast, sponsored by Crosswinds Foundation for Faith and Culture. Now, every week, what we try to do is really, and this is the mission statement for the broader Warriors on Mission movement, is we really want to connect warriors to their next mission. We believe that the obstacles that warriors most often face are isolation and unprocessed pain of the past. And we want to overcome those because we really believe that you still have a purpose and there are people who are depending upon you. Those people include your family, your friends, fellow service members, the people who had your six when you were in the service, also the people whose six you had. We really believe that walking with those people is part of what's going to help you identify that next mission. You're dependent upon them. They're dependent upon you as well. Now, in this episode, I am going to introduce you to one of my friends, Andrew Farr. He is the chaplain with the VFW. All across the state of Tennessee and uniquely several weeks ago we talked about the Freedom Tour and how the Freedom Tour where Chris Turner is playing and hosting concerts with Crosswinds Foundation for Faith and Culture they are doing those at Veterans of Foreign Wars Outpost and using that as an entry point to really highlight the idea that we've already trained leaders in that area and that they are launching groups using the Warrior Hope curriculum. A link to this and a link to the Freedom tour are all down in the show notes. Now, Andrew, he's one of the gentlemen that's responsible for spearheading that. As the chaplain, he really has spiritual oversight, spiritual shepherding of the members of the VFW throughout the state of Tennessee. And so I thought, let's pull him on and let's really talk about his story as a Marine with the Purple Heart. Let's talk about what he's doing as a veteran, a foreign war chaplain. And then let's talk a little bit about how all of that feeds in to this project and how it might be of benefit to you. Without further introduction, here it is, the conversation with my friend, Andrew Farr. All right, so I'm on here with my friend, Andrew Farr, uh, pronounced not like nearer, but far, 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 that's right. forest. Okay, that's, yeah. I mean, I don't think we use it like that, but that'll help you pronounce it. Uh, I met Andrew, man, it's been, right at a year as of the recording of this because we drove up, spent the night up in columbia uh tennessee in that area and then did a warrior hope training right there live at the boondocks which is a it's a singing venue concert venue party venue whatever yeah uh, right there great little uh, spot and you were in there went through the warrior hope training all in an effort to implement that uh, now in VFWs really across the state of Tennessee. Uh, before we get to that and your involvement, I, I really kind of want to just have you tell everybody who you are. So you are U.S. Marine. Yes, sir. Um, my Take name is, there. okay, uh, my name is Richard A. Farr, uh, born in Tennessee, uh, raised in New Hampshire, lived in Savannah and New York. But now I live here in the great state of Tennessee, so it's been a full circle. Uh, I went to boarding school in Massachusetts. I went to college in Florida. Then I decided to enlist into the United States Marine Corps. Uh, you bounced, man. You like you were all over. I was all over the place. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I mean, Andy, I'm a, I'm a squirrel. I mean, you talk to anybody that knows me, I'm like all over the place. Um, Went to college, got my BA in classical studies, and then I enlisted in the Marine Corps in uh, Naples, Florida. Went to boot camp, went to infantry school. Um, I became a uh, 0331, which is an infantry machine gunner. Uh, did three deployments, uh, uh, Karma, Iraq in 05, uh, Ramadi, Iraq in 2006, and I was on the USS Kearsarge in 2007. Um, I received the Purple Heart in 2006. That was uh, that summer uh, in Ramadi was really bad. Uh, we lost uh, 17 guys. Uh, the prior deployment before in 05, we lost eight. And then we had uh, the uh, and then we had one suicide on uh, the Navy ship, but uh, the Navy ship, it wasn't supposed to be a bad, it was actually, that was a fun deployment. The, the first two were, were terrible. Now, what, what do you mean by define what you mean by terrible deployment? Because terrible deployments. Uh, yeah, a lot of people listening are thinking, 
I mean, it's like, like it's it's combat. You weren't. I mean, any deployment is service to the country, right? Yeah, and, and any deployment is is it's you're away from your family, you're away from your friends. But this yeah, one, like, um, you were. I mean, you you went you you were pretty close. I mean, in in the action, obviously, we were we were we were in the action. Uh, Fallujah, yeah, you were the action. Uh, in 05, Fallujah was like 30 minutes away. We were in a little town, a little suburb uh, that was really bad. Uh, uh, and then Ramadi, and then we came home. We did that for six months. We came home, trained, and went back to Ramadi. And uh, Time Magazine uh, said Ramadi was the worst city in the world, uh, according to Time Magazine of 2006. Um wow. A lot of Taliban, uh, a lot of ISIS stuff. Um, they, you know, we had improvised, uh, we had VBIDs, vehicle borne IEDs. We had IEDs of every nature. I even saw an IED on a guy that's riding a bicycle. Oh, that wow. was something crazy. I've never seen that before. So, an IED for people that are listening that aren't in military. That's good. IED is improvised explosive device. So, basically, it's like a shape charge um, made out of whatever they can find uh, that you usually would uh, put it in the road on a concrete in a truck on a bicycle or in a person. Like there was one person that actually shoved it inside them, walked in and blew themselves up. I mean, they had, they, they had no remorse whatsoever. They did not like us at all. You just basically IED is you turn anything Anything that you can, you turn it into a bomb. Yeah, like yeah. A, a 120 mic mic uh, round um, a cell phone. You can turn a cell phone, a, a can of chewing tobacco. Uh, just depends on. I mean, they get kind of crafty. Um, they're they're part of, they're kind of smart. Yeah. Well. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's when that's kind of the game is to. And I, I apologize. Um, uh, I apologize to your viewers. I'm uh, I'm a little congested today, as you can tell by my voice. No, nobody would know, man. Nobody knows you. Like so, they or they would just be like, "Hey, I guess that's yeah. that's just your voice." That's oh, just, okay. Hey, so so I, I, now you've talked about some serious things. Um, I want to shift gears a little bit because I remember at at the at the training uh, when we were teaching people. Uh, at the boondocks about the warrior hope curriculum. I'll put a link down to the curriculum down in the show notes. You know, one of the ideas that we bring up in that curriculum is that, you know, when people get out of the military, when men and women come out, uh, in, in fact, I say this at the beginning of every episode of the podcast is always say, Hey, w- w- one of the things we do is we actually connect veterans to their next mission and I always highlight and say the most common obstacles that we see are these two right here. Number yep. one is isolation. Yep. And number two is unresolved hurts from the past, you know, or the moral, unprocessed the, pain, the moral, you say it. That's and, the moral, that's the moral injury, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I said, I said, you know, in all that, I said this at the training, I said, when you were in the military, you didn't do anything by yourself. I mean, you always no. had some. You always were somebody. Yep. And then you said, one day, <laughs> one time, I had to go on a road by myself, and I didn't know what, how long I was guarding it, but they dropped me off, and I, I remember that you oh, had yeah. one episode. Oh, yeah, I I remember that's right. About. I remember that. Um, yeah, um, I was uh, I was doing post, and they dropped me off at this this building, and they just sort of like, okay, you're here for a couple hours. I'm like, all right, good to go. I'm by myself. There's a picture of me just sitting next to the building with my rifle uh, right next to me, and I'm wearing like um, I'm wearing something to keep the sand out, yeah. and I was there for like six to eight hours, like by myself. <laughs> <laughs> no radio, no nothing. Like I just, I just had faith that they'd come and pick me back up, and they did, they did. But it was just, it was weird being out there in Iraq <laughs> by myself for a long time. Yeah, not knowing who's coming, not knowing really not, where yeah, you're at. Exactly. Knowing, okay, so you you are the chaplain uh, with the state of Tennessee Veterans of Foreign Wars. The chaplains really do incredible work in the military. 
Um, when you shift and you come over to the Veterans of Foreign Wars, let's talk about that a little bit. I would love for you to tell everybody what the Veterans of Foreign Wars is. Uh, and then number two, you know, the chaplain in that position, what the chaplain does. And then we'll talk about some of what you guys are doing with yeah. the Warrior Hope uh, Project. But yeah, let's talk about Veterans of Foreign Wars. Well, first. the Veterans of Foreign Wars that. is uh, one of the oldest uh, VSOs or Veterans Service Organization in the world. It started, it was started in 1899. Um, and it was a place for, for veterans to come together to, because when you get out of the military, you're going to, you're lost and, and, and you're isolated and you don't know what to do, but the VFW brings all those veterans from every branch of service, from every, from Vietnam, from Korea, from world war one, world war two, Vietnam, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, desert storm. They bring them all together under one tribe because we do better with people of like-minded nature. Um, uh, we all took that oath, um, depending, it doesn't matter what time we took it. We all took that out to defend the, our country, um, the great United States of America and the VFW, they do so much to help our veterans. They, they helped out with the GI bill back in 19, I think it was 50. I want to say 55. They, they legislate with the president they they go to congress and they they tell congress <clears throat> what they need what the veterans need um agent orange blue water navy uh, the gi bill uh, we're doing um new stuff about <clears throat> toxic uh toxic fumes that we used to burn over there like how it's affecting our bodies now so we get more help from the va um the va does scholarships for uh uh, uh, Patriot Pen, uh, Voice of Democracy. Uh, Voice of Democracy, the winner gets a $30,000 scholarship for college. Patriot Pen, uh, Voice of Democracy is for high school students. Patriot Pen is for, I think, what we call junior high or middle school kids. Yeah. Um, and they get, they don't get 30,000, but they get like, I think it's 7,000 uh, to go to college. Uh, the Voice of Democracy, huge event. Uh, they they named the winner, um, I think, in March. Um, and they actually get to go to the National Convention. Um, and they get to talk. They get to to write the you know their essay. They get to read it in front of all of us. It's it's pretty cool. They get an all expense paid trip to D.C. The all all ex, uh, expense paid trip to wherever the National Convention is, and yeah. it's just. The VFW, it does, it, it does so much. If you go to VFW.org, you will see that there is, I mean, we do unmet needs. We do help for heroes. We do uh, still still serving. Like we do shout outs like nationwide. And, and by the way, we have 1.5 million members, sorry, um, worldwide. We're in Europe. We're in South America. We're in Japan. We're in America. Um, we are basically we are all over and the way to get into the VFW, you have to have served in a conflict overseas, uh, be it Vietnam, Korea, Kosovo, armed forces, expeditionary, Guad, uh, E, which is global war on terrorism, expeditionary, uh, uh, basically world war one, world war two, um, uh, all these, uh, all these big campaigns that we did, that will get you into the service. That will get you into the VFW. All right. So, so you you mentioned when you get out of the military, people are lost. We are. And the VFW I was. gave you a connecting point. Yeah, and I mean, no, not everybody, but yeah, you know, oh, it's yeah, that's, that's your yeah. Story. And it, it is common with a lot of people. What makes people feel that? sense of being lost well i mean you said it before i mean when, when we get in we we take that oath we go to boot camp we are with everybody like we even have a buddy a buddy person going to the bathroom with us um i mean you are with somebody all the time and you will always have somebody telling you what to do at every single moment of the day and then your time runs out and you're done. You've done your four years of service or six years or 20 years or whatever. Yeah. You uh, turn in your ID 
and then you give your final salute and you say goodbye. You are not, you are under no obligation whatsoever anymore with the military and all, and maybe some people, all they've known is the military. They don't know anything else. I, I was a little different. I, I had a job before I, I, I was in the, the, I was a paint uh, salesman for three and a half years after college yeah. before I served in the military. So I had a resume. I had this, I had all this stuff that I knew how to do. Um, so I wasn't lost, but I, at the same time, I did feel lost because I didn't have anyone I could relate to out in the real world. And that's, that's that isolation because you get out in the real world and you've done all this service and you've done all these great things for the country. And then you get out and you're like, Oh, what do I do now? Like right. you're not one, you don't, you, sometimes you, you wouldn't know what to do. Um, you have to have, you know, you you got to call somebody like, what do I do? Uh, but sometimes you won't even call. Sometimes you don't even go that far. And it's just, it's, uh, it's tough. We're trying to get the resources out to our veterans saying that it is not lost. You have places to go after your honorable or dishonorable or other than honorable service. Yeah. How, however it, it, it went. However it pans out. Yeah. So you end up at the VFW there in Tennessee. And at some point, you know, recently you became the chaplain. Uh, tell me about the role of the chaplain and what, what, what do you do there officially? And then what is really some of your hopes and aspirations of what you'd like to see unfold in that area? Well, the chaplain, um, usually the chaplain um, for meetings and for district meetings, they usually read the prayer. Um, you know, and when, when I first got there, like I didn't really hear that much about the chaplain. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a position just to have a position. Uh, but, but it's so much more. And I'm trying to take, I'm trying to change it. Um, chaplains are supposed to be the spiritual guru and the guide for its members. And we have 16,502 members uh, in Tennessee. I have been to nine funerals. I have, uh, I, I will go to Tennessee. State, you're the state chaplain, right? Yes, sir. So not not of a post. I mean, I want to talk about your post in it, but you you're so you you're kind of the I, yeah. shepherd for all of these guys. Okay, I'm the, I'm the shepherd. I'm the shepherd for everybody. Now I I try to you know I'm like I'm an Episcopalian. I'm a, I'm a good church kid. I uh, I came out of my mom's womb Episcopalian. I got confirmed. I got baptized. Um, and I try to use what I learned growing up in the Episcopal Church, and I'm trying to. Uh, not force it on my members, but I'm trying to use some of what we learned from the teachings of, of Jesus and the prophets. And I'm trying to slowly integrate it into everything that we do. I actually, I have my own chaplain Facebook page where every day we actually, we honor and venerate um, a saint or somebody that did good things in the church. Like today, is um oh gosh no yesterday was scholastica she was a saint and a martyr and a, a monastic in 587 and she got praise and laud for what she did out in the world and, and and every day like we have there's a different day for you know uh saint paul like yeah. his conversion um i did a i did a little uh thing on that um today was theodora uh empress in uh 867 and um we have a right to we have uh, uh the epistle and the psalm and the gospel are all written because uh, are, are similar to what this person had done back in uh, back in eight sixty seven uh, A.D. All right, I'm so, going to put a link to your group down in the show yeah. so people can follow that along. You said you had done nine funerals. Yeah, uh, we we lost. Yeah. 
So uh, we lost uh, we lost a bunch of people in the beginning of this year, and I was uh, very fortunate to be able to go and, and spend time with the families yeah. uh, in their grieving period. Um, I send out um, grieving cards if I if I can make it. I, I will I will phone the family. Um, I will go to a funeral. I will go to Chattanooga. I will go to Knoxville. I will go to Memphis. I will go to wherever I have to go. And um, the mileage on my car can prove all of that because I just bought my car last year and I've got 55,000 miles on it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah all right. Um, I also um, I also do uh, every month we do um, uh, a newsletter for the VFW and I have a chaplain's corner. Actually, last month or this month, um, I was talking about the 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 uh, existence of February, where it came from, because one, I'm a classical studies major and it, February. February is where we remember the four chaplains of the, the military. They on February 3rd, uh, 1945, these four chaplains basically were on the, uh, the SS uh, Dorchester and they gave their life jackets to other Navy personnel. So those people could live, and the the four chaplains went down with the uh, went down with the ship. Oh wow! Uh, I'll send you I'll, I'll send you a link to that too. It's yeah, it's, wanna, a pretty, it's a pretty it's a pretty good read. That so I can share those. All right, so let's talk about your post. You're involved. You guys have a post. You just started it not too long ago with a handful of people. Now it's exploded. Which when people say a VFW, they would initially think that that's you know going to be older gentlemen you ours know, not. But, but yours ours. is very different yours is well so well we're not different we're just we're um i mean we've got some we've got a i think two vietnam guys we've got one korea but everybody else is desert storm iraq afghanistan uh, and uh syria so the average age for our post is uh, and you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna flip when you hear this because uh, i i added up all the the all the ages and then divided and our average age is 42.26 years of age i mean that, that makes sense because all the desert storm guys now are you, you know getting up to 50 54 yeah i mean they're all yeah because i remember being in high school when you know we officially went to war yeah um, so yeah, all those guys are, and then of course you have everybody that's come behind them. So, I mean, it makes sense. And I think you need, it's not that you don't need older gentlemen in there. Some of those guys are tougher, you know, and bad. Oh yeah. Oh, those guys, those guys paved the way for us. We love <laughs> our Vietnam vets. There's, there's wisdom, you know, in all of it. Imagine some yep. of the younger guys exactly. learn a lot from the older guys. The older guys, man, could even learn some. You know, for, there's just it's it's all needed. I mean, that's kind of the we're trying. Of we're trying to um, bridge the gap, as you say. Um, so you bridge the gap between the services. Twenty-seven people is how many you started the group with, and then now, with, uh, yeah, many? twenty actually twenty-six, um, and we have one hundred and eighty-seven people now. So at a VFW post, um, you guys meet how often? Uh, once we meet once a month, uh, sometimes twice, uh, we have a house committee. Uh, we talk about basically, <clears throat> basically at the house committee, we're talking about what we want to do for the real meeting, uh, the general meeting. And so the general meeting, we meet once a month and we talk about what events we're doing, uh, where we're going, who, what money are we donating? Um, like, uh, we do a lot of community service and we are really, really, that is one of our big things for our post is community service. We, uh, last year when we started, we started June 8th, 2021, uh, in June. And we've been around for about nine months. So, uh, there's this program and, um, that uh, we have, uh, and basically it can, it can show you how much community service you've been doing. Well, we started, we, uh, we have increased our community service from last year by 3,000%. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we're part of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I myself, uh, I'm gonna be a Rotarian on March 1st. Um, 
We're at ribbon cuttings. I actually shelter the homeless three times a week at the journey home, which I have to do tonight. And I'm sick and I have to do that tonight. It's a 12 hour shift. I did a Wednesday. We took care of 40 homeless guys. Tonight it's probably going to be the same because when it gets when the temperature gets below 32, yeah. that's when uh, the coldest nights opens up. And I basically am doing I'm watching over them while they sleep. I give them a place to they have a cot, they have blankets, they have a pillow. And then I, I basically at seven o'clock in the morning, I have to wake them up and get them out on the street because it's at the first Baptist church and that space is being used or being cleaned for the next night. Yeah. So you guys are doing, so the, the VFW is, is if I'm understanding kind of how yours is operating. Got to, got to be a veteran that's served in a conflict off site, not in the States. Uh, and you guys are using this for com- camaraderie with each other. Yes. And then also you're using it to connect people to a bigger purpose, serving, giving back in some way. And it seems like you guys have a lot of, uh, w- whether you call it community service, outreach, we have a lot of a lot of a lot of advocacy and a lot of outreach, yeah. But this is this is just our post. We have right. two posts in Murfreesboro. We have eighty nine posts in Tennessee. I mean, and you you combine that with um, Texas or Florida or Alabama or Louisiana or Kentucky, um, it's just it just it boggles the mind how much the veterans care about where we live in our community. It's, it's amazing. Well, it's like you're serving with, you, you know, so, and that, that's one of the big things we teach uh, or is really trying to get, I would say get, we're not trying to force anything. It's really, uh, again, at the beginning of the podcast, every single week say this, all right. So we're trying to connect veterans to their next mission. Um, whatever that is, you've been serving in the past in a uniform. Uh, you've been serving, carrying a rifle or, or, other, you know, source of ammunition or providing supply and support so that others could carry the ammunition. So however it was, now yeah. what's the next mission? I see you guys doing that really well. Let's talk about, I don't have the book right here. I thought I might've had it right there on my shelf, but the, the Warrior Hope curriculum, I'll put a link down in the show. I notes love it. To that. Uh, Dave, Let's talk that's about a great, that's a great, curr- uh, great curriculum. You guys are, uh, you were at the training and now you guys are putting that, all across the state and, using and with the, the with help of uh, with help with, uh, from Chris Turner um, and Chris Turner is a huge advocate and, and we're, he's doing concerts and he's, he's teaching and, and I'd like to, you know, I mean, I, I, I am for, I am so supportive of it. It's not even funny. I just, I wish I could get out there and, and, and touch more people with uh, a warrior's mission and warriors on mission. Sorry. And, um, I just, I need to find, I need to find, uh, some time to go visit and, uh, and we'll do it. And I will, I'll, I'll, that will be like, I, I hope to be running for chaplain for next year. And we're going to keep this, we're going to keep this going because this momentum people need to know the differences between PTSD versus moral injury. They need to see the signs. They need to learn this stuff because you can save a life from knowing this stuff. Right. Well, and then, it, I mean, you know, it, also resources the people who may have might have been carrying hurt and pain for a while. That's what, what was exactly what exactly uh, uh, two fold, yes. to me is every time we're in a training session for leaders, it seems like about half, maybe more of the leaders actually say, man, like I like I think I'm dealing with this right here. Like I didn't have words for it, but I like I think that you know they pinpoint something. Of course they just address it, move on. And then bring other people forward with them, and so you know that's one of been one of the great kind of eye openers is you know you don't have to have all of your stuff together in order to help others. You just got to be you know half a step ahead of them, and then yeah. just bring them with you. Um, I did interview Chris. Uh, he, we featured that a few weeks ago, and he talked all oh, about the tour and how he was you know going to the VFWs doing concerts, having everybody come out, that camaraderie piece while they're there. Hey, by the way, you know, I've been involved with this. This is part of my purpose is what he would say. Oh, and there's a leader 
that here in your VFW that you probably know has been trained and is launching a group. Uh, so, you know, with that, they're kind of spreading those out across uh, Tennessee using some of the relational connections you guys already have in place. Uh, yeah, and we'll be and we'll be bringing this up actually next week. Uh, we have our midwinter conference coming up, and we'll definitely. I know Brian Walker, our state commander. I know he's yeah. going to be talking about it. I'm going to be talking about it. Um, we've got um, actually we have a huge thing coming up in April. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Operation TP Pyramid. No, that, that that sounds like something I would have done in high school, but I yeah, um, I will I will tell you about it. It's a great um, program given uh, brought to us by a member that just transferred from New York because he did it um, way back in the he did it uh, like ten years ago for okay. New York, and he brought it to Tennessee. Well, we have to raise forty five. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, first thing, did you know that toilet paper is a luxury item? Uh, in the world of homeless shelters and um, uh, places like that. I did. And I think COVID showed us it could actually be a luxury item that we take for granted. And I don't mean that in a funny way or political right. way. We could make it political really fast. Um, but I, I think it showed that there's a lot of things that we take for granted that you suddenly realize, man, if I couldn't walk into a store and grab this, which a homeless person can't it, it it suddenly it's like it's an important luxury yeah item. well yeah. what we're doing is we're trying to raise uh we're trying to raise forty five thousand rolls of scott toilet paper we will build the biggest pyramid in memphis and then after we build that pyramid we will donate all of that toilet paper to all the homeless shelters around tennessee Man, that sounds like something that, uh, you know, knowing like guys from different branches of the service, that sounds like something a Marine would have come up with. I don't know if they did or did not. But no, it was, it was Army. It was an Army guy who came up with it. So, And then an Air Force guy and an Army guy are the ones in charge. But I will send you, um, I will send you uh, a link. Yeah. Um, because you can donate um, and we'd love to have you guys there. Actually, Chris is playing that concert. Um, what paper pyramid? Yeah. I, uh, I'm going to call him after this and I'm going to see if I can get up there. Uncle Cy, like Uncle Cy, and you know Uncle Cy, he's going to be there. That's funny. Um, we've already, uh, we put in a grant today to the big VFW to national to, for like, uh, I think it's like a thousand bucks, uh, to buy toilet paper that we can give, um, to Memphis. And then they have a big, they have a big tractor trailer in the back of their post and then everybody is going to bring their donations and we're going to build a pyramid. And basically this helps out the homeless shelters because they don't have to go out of their own pocket to buy toilet paper for their shelters. Yeah. I mean, because right. the federal government, they can't get money from the federal government for toilet paper because it's considered a luxury item. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you could leave it to bureaucrats can mess up anything, right? Oh, uh, now you're yeah. now now you're bringing in politics right now, Andy. Well, I mean, I it's, no, it's not. It's like it's just true. You you know, if you're on yeah. the right side, you, you know, you guys can mess it up. If you're on the left, you guys can really mess it up. You yeah, know, which we can we you know can prove lately. But I mean, you know, in four years it'll swing the other direction and we'll mess it up in the other direction. Like that's just that's just kind of how we roll. Uh, it just goes in a, it's a it's yeah, it's, it's cyclical, man. Cycle. It just goes in a circle. Hey man, listen. I appreciate you know, what what you've done in the past, and uh, man, we, we we back when you were young, taking up the mantle, you know, answering that call, being willing, sign a blank check with your whole life, going overseas, serving our country, not knowing what you're going into, still going, coming back, and saying, okay, I'm I'm back. No more uniform set the gun aside, what's the next mission? And how do I use my life now uh, to walk out my purpose, to serve other people? I mean, as you know, you when you start walking this out, you've got family depending upon you. This is why yep. it matters. You've got friends depending upon you. You've got fellow soldiers uh, and servicemen and women yep. warriors who had your six when you were serving. You had theirs. 
they're depending upon you now. So I commend you for uh, taking up that mantle in a new way, walking that out. And I think a lot of people could benefit just from hearing, hey, there are service organizations out there uh, where you can connect up. They're already ready made. You don't have to go find the veterans. You don't have to be alone. You can go they're find already there. Ready yeah. made, and you can go walk in there with a bunch of imperfect people, just like the ones that you served with that are radically gracious and radically generous and uh, will welcome you in and will take the next steps forward with you. Uh, anything else you want to say as we roll this out and close it out? No, I just want to thank Warriors on Mission. Uh, I want to thank Andy. I want to thank Bob. I want to thank Chris, our, our huge advocate, um, for getting me in front of you guys. Um, I, Warriors on Mission, when I when I did that, that eight hours was probably one of the best eight hours I've ever I've ever done. Um, the moral injury part. I mean, you remember, yeah. I I had to excuse myself for like 30 minutes because I was bawling and crying like a baby in the bathroom. Right. I, I mean, I, I remember. Yeah, you were one of the guys that was a leader that was there to get trained. I was like, man, I got I still got some junk in the truck I need to deal with. Not and, a problem. And, and, man, you deal you with helped. it. There's no shame in it. Freedom's in the light. Deal with it. Bring other people with you. You helped get that. You helped get that junk, you know, uh, sorted a little bit and uh, a lot of it. And uh, I'm really appreciative. And I know God is uh, I'm seeing God through you. And I'm hoping you can see God through me because um, you are you are doing the Lord's work. And um, and I really commend you for it. Man, we appreciate you. I, th I think, you know, we, we see it. We see that call on you and see you walking in that purpose and serving other people. You know, like you said earlier, you know, you were trying to bring Jesus to people. You mentioned that. I think that you're you're doing it. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me and Andrew today here on the Warrior Hope Podcast. It would be a great honor to us if you would subscribe and share or rate, depending upon what social media platform you are listening to or watching this on. As always, here's the three takeaways that I grabbed from this. Uh, in, in Andrew's story, he says he got out of the Marine Corps and he was lost and isolated. I would highlight to you that that is, as I wrote right here, that is a normal response. When you have filled your time, filled your schedule with a routine, it's normal when people are changing jobs, changing careers. Man, we saw that in 2020 with the pandemic when all of a sudden everybody's routine was disrupted. How much greater would it be when you've given your entire life to a mission to protect, to serve, to be willing to fight, to be willing to lay down your life, being lost, feeling isolated, that is, as I say right here on the piece of paper, that is a normal response. And so if you feel that, uh, that leads me to step number two right here. Uh, Andrew said it's important that you connect with other veterans. And I would highlight right here that there are groups already in place. Just simply give it a test drive and go connect with some of the people in the group. You're gonna find people in those groups of all ages. You're gonna find people with all different degrees of life experience, all different uh, combat related experience, all types of different deployment. He mentioned the VFW. There are other groups. In fact, I'm gonna put a link in the show notes uh, below where one of my friends in season one, when we were just doing audio, her name's Ginger Branson. She's here local in Birmingham. And I, it seems to know every single service provider there is and how some of these different groups uh, uniquely tailor to specific personalities for specific service areas, specific groups. And so I'm going to put the information where you can go listen to her conversation there as well. The third point that Andrew uh, mentioned this is camaraderie and mission are both important. So the connection points that you make with those other veterans, that becomes a rallying point. But then also notice what the veterans of foreign wars were doing where he's post, where he's stationed. They were all continuing to go out on mission together. Some of those missions, 
in my mind may seem something that's more appealing to me. Uh, others may feel more appealing to you. You can't do everything. That's not the point. Just connect with some people and then get out there and do something. I'm Andy Jenkins. Again, this is the Warrior Hope Podcast. Here's what we try to do, and I'm going to hold it up so that if you're watching, you can hear it and you can see it. We connect veterans to their mission. The most common obstacles that we see are isolation, unresolved hurts, unprocessed pain from the past. We really believe that you need to deal with it because there are people that are dependent upon you, family, friends, and fellow service members. The people who had your six in the past, the people whose six you had, they are going to become important even now as you walk this thing out. And we believe it all matters because you have a purpose and there are those same people who are dependent upon you. I'll see you again next week. Thank you.